Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. I am in the kitchen putting on my apron because today I'm gonna take you with me um, and we're gonna do something um, in the kitchen. So y'all, it's tomato season. I am still, my counters are still covered with tomatoes. It is, um, I guess you would almost say mid-September. Um, we're getting close to mid-September, but I still have lots of tomatoes. And so today I'm gonna to try something new that I've never done before and I thought I would turn the camera on and take you with me. So for those that are brand new, my name is Barbara, I'm in zone 7A. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. So this season I have had an abundance of tomatoes, which I'm very, very grateful for because at the beginning of the season, it almost seemed like I wasn't gonna to have tomatoes because I had a huge aphid infestation, but we got the aphid infestation under control and y'all, I've had so many tomatoes. I have frozen tons of bags in my freezer. I've lost count. I should have at least 10 to 15 bags of frozen, gallon-sized bags of frozen tomatoes. We together have made tomato sauce two different ways, not sauce, salsa. We have made um, salsa. We canned some roasted salsa. And then um, also this week, I showed you that I did some roasted salsa but i did a freezer version so we've done that the rest of the tomatoes are in my freezer and we're going to process them later on this fall and make sauce and and things like that but for now i'm just stacking them in my freezer and then we'll do like a big bulk preserving day and do a lot of sauce but for now i have more tomatoes that i still need to do something with my freezer is getting full. I don't wanna put another batch in the freezer just yet. So I thought I would try something new. And so today we're gonna to make tomato soup. Uh, we are gonna do a roasted version because what, for whatever reason, y'all, I'm on this roasted kick. I'm like the roasting just elevates the flavor, takes it to another level. So I'm gonna do a creamy tomato soup. It's my first time ever making it. Um, and it's definitely my first time making it with my own tomatoes. Um, I like tomato soup that's creamy, like what some people would call a tomato bisque, right? That has like some type of um, way to make it creamy. I don't like traditional tomato soup. Like don't be popping the Campbell's can of tomato soup. Like I'm not gonna eat that. Um, but I will eat like a creamy tomato soup. And so I thought I would make my own because when it's done right, it tastes really, really good. So we are gonna see if we can get it done just right. So the first thing we're gonna do is wash our tomatoes. Let me show you um, how many tomatoes we're working with today. So not a ton, we got this colander bowl size. Um, I don't know how much soup that will make. Um, and so the plan is, is that I'll just eat the soup um, fresh or if for some reason there is an abundance of it because I've never done it, I have no idea how much this is gonna make. If there's more, then we're just gonna put it in the freezer. Ideally, I was gonna put it in the freezer, but I wanted to go ahead and do something with them because the longer I let them sit, the more I'm losing the tomatoes. I just threw away probably seven or eight nice sized tomatoes because they've been sitting on my counter. They've gotten soft, they're ripe. I gotta do something with them. So today is the day. The other days have been the days too, but I haven't been able to get it done. But today we're gonna get it done. So this is the size bowl that I'm working with. Um, I'll try to weigh it and see how many pounds. If I had to guess, I'm not good at that. Maybe seven, eight pounds. I'll try to wait and see what we get. But I'm going to wash these up, grab some onions and garlic. We're going to cut all that up and get it in the oven to start the roasting process. Okay, so I got the tomatoes all washed up. I grabbed some onion and garlic because we're going to roast that too. Um, and so in looking up, um, got the wrong knife. In looking up tomato soup and the best tomatoes to use, um, everything I read said like Roma tomatoes or San Marzano. Um, a lot of the recipes called for canned tomatoes and it's the um, that brand, I think it's called Cento um, or whatever. I have Roma's, my San Marzano's, are, they're finicky. Um, they didn't do as great this year. They are doing better than they did last year, but they're not consistently great. I do have quite a bit of Roma's, but I'm using like all the tomatoes that I have. I have different kinds of tomatoes in here and again they just need to be used up right and so it's better for me to try something to use them versus letting them go bad or throwing them away or things like that we don't want to do that so i'm just going to use the tomatoes i have it's a mix i have some 
Roma like paste tomatoes. I have Amish paste in here, um, but I also have like some slicing tomatoes we're gonna try and use too. Cause again, at this point, it's just about using them up. Now, would this be a recipe that I would have done at the beginning of the season? I probably wouldn't have since I've never done it before. Um, and I wouldn't have used up my tomatoes in the beginning for that, but because I have an abundance of tomatoes and because I've already, um, I have some preserved in my freezer, I've um, preserved some in salsa and I'll have plenty of sauce, then I thought, hey, why not? So I'm just chopping up the tomatoes here. Like I said, they're all different shapes, sizes. Many of them are Roma tomatoes. My Roma tomatoes actually did really, really well this year. I only have them in the back of my house um, because it was a second su succession, um, but I will definitely do more Romas next year. I've tried Romas before um, other years that have not had success, but they did really, really well this year. So I'm pleased with that. So I'm just gonna finish chopping these up and get them on the pan um, with the onions and garlic, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do from there. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention that I waited, and y'all, I was actually right, it's eight pounds of tomatoes. Now, my recipe calls for three pounds of um, tomatoes, um, and it says that three pounds makes about seven cups. So, if I'm looking at this right, and I weighed right, then we should definitely have some to freeze, which will be great especially if it tastes good. And we're gonna pray and hope that it tastes good. So um, we shall see. And again, I'm just kind of, I pulled a recipe for reference, but I'm just gonna kind of do my own thing because why not? So I got all the tomatoes on there. We are going to add some um, olive oil. This is garlic infused olive oil from one of my favorite companies, Quizito. Um, they are based out of Conway, Arkansas, but they ship. If you're an olive oil like um, snob, um, if you like good olive oil, then go to Squizitos. I will try to remember to put their link. My hands are slippery put their link, but they have all different kinds of olive oil. I have um, the garlic, I have the butter, I have chipotle, I have Tuscan. Um, so we're just gonna put some oil on here and I thought it'd be nice because it's gonna add a little bit more garlic flavor. And then we are going to just salt it. And I'm gonna add fresh garlic and roast that as well. But I'm gonna wait and do that until it's like almost like charred because leaving the garlic in here that long can kind of get, you know, it can get burnt easily. So we're just salting this up. I have my oven on 500 and we're gonna pop this in the oven and let it do its thing. So while that is um, roasting in the oven, one of the things the recipe calls for is tomato paste. And so I'm excited to try and make my own tomato paste. So this right here is tomato powder. This is actually from my tomatoes last year. So on the video where I did my tomato or spaghetti sauce, remember there was juice and skins. You know, I was pulling the skins um, out of the pan and there was also juice. So the skins of the tomatoes, I actually dehydrated. Um, and then I ground it up and made tomato powder. So again, no part of the tomato has to go wasted. And I've heard that this tomato powder, all you gotta do is add water and it becomes tomato paste. So I'll be honest, as I'm processing my tomatoes just this year and I thought about making spaghetti sauce, I thought to myself, hmm, smells good. It smells just like tomatoes. Look at that. That is literally dehydrated tomato skins to make a tomato powder. I have not even used this um, all year long. Like, cause I don't use tomato paste a lot. I guess maybe the stuff I cook, it doesn't call for it which before I didn't even buy it a lot. But anyway, let's try and see if we can make this work. So the recipe calls for like, I don't know, two tablespoons since we're doubling it. We'll do four tablespoons. I'm just eyeballing it. And I'm just gonna add water and stir it up and see what happens. I 
but I thought to myself, I didn't even know if I was going to, I was thinking to myself when I made my um, spaghetti and pizza sauce and all that stuff this year, when I do that, I was asking myself, would I save my skins? And I was thinking, I don't know, because I haven't even used this um, product at all, but I thought it sure is nice that I have it now. I don't have to go out to the store, which I think this tomato paste is just to kind of give it, you know, more of a rich tomato flavor as well as maybe it helps to thicken it up. I'm not sure. Now, it's interesting because this definitely looks different than the tomato paste that you buy at the store. Like it's a different color. You see that? It's a completely different color. But it's concentrated tomato powder. Um, and I didn't look up any instructions. I just figured the powder plus water would, would make a paste. So let me actually go look it up now and see if I'm doing this the right way. Let me add a little bit more because it looks like it might be a little bit too wet. Let's see. If you've done this before, let me know if you've dried your tomato skins, made powder, and then made a paste out of it. Let me know. It's pasty. To me, it's a different consistency than what you buy at the store. So that's what it looks like. Now, let me look it up and see what the what Google says about it. Okay, Google says I did it right. Two parts water to one part tomato powder. I didn't measure, but I mean, I just eyeballed it. So I think it looks the way it's supposed to, to look. The only thing Google said, um, some of them said add hot water. I don't know if the hot water matters. Anyway, I'm just going to do a little bit since I've never done it before. But, I mean, I got tomato paste. So we're going to add it to the, to the soup and see what happens. So I'm going to let that roast in the oven probably a good mm, maybe 40 minutes or so. It should be good and done. And then, really, y'all, we just blend everything up into the food processor or blender. Or I could use my immersion blender. And we're going to see what happens. We're going to add the seasons and see what happens. Um, I do need to go outside and get me some fresh basil um, to add to it. So we'll, we'll um, see what happens. I'll bring it back when the tomatoes get done. Okay, guys, we are back. Um, the tomatoes and stuff are done. So instead of me doing it in my blender, I'm going to actually use my immersion blender. So I'm just going to pour, pour all of this into a pot. And hopefully I can get all of it in here without making a mess. So far, so good. We'll just use the tongs for the rest of these. Of course, it looks amazing. Y'all, I'm on this roasting kick. And to be honest, y'all, I never really roasted vegetables. I never really roasted anything until this year. So I have a roast function on my air fryer. So I roast veggies and stuff for dinner in the air fryer because um, it's quick and easy and it's right there on the counter versus putting them in the oven. And y'all, I did zucchini and squash and all of that um, earlier in the summer. And it just tasted so good. It's like so much different. I know I'm late to the game, but now that I'm at the game, in the game, <laughs> I am just like blown away with how the roasting just, you know, takes up the flavor. I got this big old pot. I probably didn't need this big of a pot, but that's okay. So we are going to add our tomato paste that we made up. So I'm going to just start with one tablespoon to start because I don't know what it's going to do. Um, and then I've got some fresh basil that I'm going to add in here smells so good. I went and grabbed this from the garden because I didn't have any in the house. Um, we'll start with that. And then, what else does it say? I'm kind of loosely following the recipe. Uh, it says some sugar and then some cream. So I'm using this cream, which is a dairy-free option. So again, you can use regular cream if you like, you know, dairy and milk. So I'm going to pour this in here. This is like dairy-free whipping cream there. But again, I'm gonna pour half of that in there. And then 
let me grab some sugar to put in here to help balance out the acidity and then we're just gonna blend it up and see what it tastes like okay we're gonna find out what this is all about but it looks good let me see if I can show you just what it's looking like you can kind of see that's the cream the, the basil the tomatoes I kept the the juice in there we got the roasted garlic the roasted onions all of that i'm hoping it makes like a pretty color so this is my immersion blender this is by vitamix this thing i don't use it enough that's so that's why i mean i mean there's not a lot of things that i'm paraying all the time it's not something that, that i use every day or even every week so that's why i said oh let me use my immersion blender versus using my vitamix so let us Let me turn it up. I'm blending it up. It's turning a beautiful color. I'm glad I kept the juice because I almost feel like there's not enough liquid. But let's keep going. We'll see how it's going. Let me turn it up. We're definitely getting there. It's a beautiful color. I cannot wait to show you. So pretty. Turn it up one more notch. I started off on a slow or a low setting. But let me show you what it's looking like. And that's another thing you can detach this right here. So this is what it's looking like. Do you see that? That looks good, y'all. Let me get a spoon and taste this. I can't wait. Cannot wait. Let's just do a taste test and just see. It's not the consistency I want yet. Oh my goodness. O-M-G! Y'all, that's good. It's not hot because I was letting my tomatoes and stuff cool off. I had taken my oven. They probably have been sitting out of the oven for probably 30 or 40 minutes. I need a little bit more salt. Y'all, this tastes so good. If you like creamy tomato soup, this is the ticket right here. Let me blend it up some more. Let me turn this up. I'm about to lose all dignity. Hold on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't nobody in the family have to eat this but me. And it is not going to hurt my feelings. Let me, I can use the same spoon because this is not leaving my house. That is so, so good. That is downright amazing, y'all. Let me show you. Oh. Do y'all see that? All I need now 
is a grilled cheese sandwich or some good old um, fresh sourdough bread. I don't have any sourdough in my house. I'm actually making some today. Today is my day to make it. When I tell you that tastes so good, now I wish I had more tomatoes. I got some more on my counter that's not quite right. I'm gonna make this again and it's going in my freezer. It is that good. Let me get a bowl. I'm gonna heat it up so I can get the full effect because right now it's like room temperature and it tastes so good. Okay, I want you to see the consistency. Look at that color. Y'all, this is, this is like tomato bisque, creamy tomato soup. Okay, I nuked it for a few seconds in the microwave because I want to get the full effect. If I was not on camera. Y'all, all I can say is that this is the bomb. That was so easy. All you need now is a sandwich, a grilled cheese sandwich, or some good old sourdough bread, French bread, something you, that you can dunk the bread in. That tastes so good, y'all. So easy. All we did was we roasted tomatoes, onions, and garlic in the oven. I'm, you can make it without roasting, but again, roasting just elevates the flavor. We roasted it, we put it in a pot, we added some cream, some salt, and some basil, and blended it up with an immersion blender. You can put it in your Vitamix, you can put it in a food processor, Now, I wonder how much I have. Mm. I'm going to go ahead and put it in those containers. But this is pretty pretty much going to be my lunch tomorrow. This is going to be my lunch tomorrow. Because I'm going to make me some, some sourdough today. And yeah, that's going to be my lunch. I don't know that it's going to make it to the freezer. If I had to guess, I probably have, you know, those freezer containers, those 16 ounces. I probably have enough for three, if I had to guess. Which would be the equivalent of six cups. So whoever said you can get seven cups from three pounds, mm -mm. I probably just ate a cup. You, the recipe also calls for Parmesan cheese. Again, when you're vegan, you can get a, a vegan Parmesan cheese and add in here. If you're not vegan, put your regular full fat Parmesan cheese in here. The bomb. And I don't know. And then we added tomato paste that was from 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 us. So everything in here is homemade. Excuse me, homegrown. The tomatoes, the tomato paste came from my tomatoes. The basil came from my garden. The onions came from me. The garlic came from me. Like this is a hundred percent homegrown creamy tomato soup. It will forever be. This is on the list from here on out. I will definitely be making more of this. As I get tomatoes in, I'm looking around because I got a little bit more here. I got some more that's ripening up. I got enough to make another batch. Plus I still got tomatoes on the vine. I'm going to make more of this and put it in my freezer because that's going to come in handy come this fall and winter. Now, I wish I had the 32 ounce uh, freezer containers because I would freeze this in quarts because a pint of this is just enough for one person. And I don't know if my husband, my husband is not a soup person. He doesn't think that soup is food. So I never make a lot of soup, although I like soup. I don't, I want to say I love soup. I, the soups that I like, I love, if that makes sense. Um, but I don't make soup often because if I try to serve him soup for dinner, he's looking at me like, where is the food? Like, that's not real food. And I'm thinking, soup and a sandwich is a meal. It's, it's food. But he don't ever have to eat this. 
this is good to me and it will forever be in my house because it is that good. Do y'all see my bowl? Because I have a little class and because I got a little dignity, I'm not gonna lick this bowl. Do I want to? I do. I'm gonna package this right on up. I cannot begin to tell you how good this is. Okay, let me just close this out. If you like tomato soup, you wanna try this. If you have homegrown tomatoes and you've never made it with your own homegrown tomatoes. If you like creamy tomato soup, tomato bisque, you wanna be all over this. You wanna get this in your freezer, in your belly, in your pantry, how, well, I don't know if you, you probably can't can it because of the dairy, but you can freeze it. Um, I mean, the cream or whatever. I don't think you can can that. So if you're a tomato soup fan, this right here is it. It is absolutely, and I feel good because everything in this pot, I grew with these hands. It just takes it over the top. Anyway, y'all, I could keep going on and on and on. I'm not gonna do that. I just wanna say thank you for joining me today in my kitchen as we made homegrown, homemade, creamy tomato soup for the first time. Uh, just another way to use the tomatoes that's coming out of your gardens. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. I do not take it for granted. Remember that gardening is a journey. This is part of it. This is the favor of it. This is the result of it. This is our reward. Let's remember to grow together. I'll see you next time, friend.